Hi, I'm Timothy Luce and I'm building a castle. Today what we're going to work on is our first lift for the carriage house. The carriage house is going to serve as a workshop for building cabinets, making doors, that kind of stuff uh, while we're waiting on concrete to cure. So um, it's also going to be sort of the first test large format wall, um, which based on the small wall we stood up the other day, I have no uh, hesitation to go ahead and move forward. I am going to be waiting for an engineer to spec how thick we need to pour the concrete and how much reinforcing steel we need, but that doesn't mean I can't get started laying our first course of stone. Now, um, I am using the traditional rubble method of masonry, and in that, um, you would be working on a vertical wall, and you would build the wall in sections not taller than 24 inches, roughly 18 to 24 inches. Those were called lifts. Um, and part of the reason for that, the main reason is, that the weight of the stone and the mortar and all that stuff would, would uh, could condense the mortar and result in undesired effects. So, um, the reason they did it in that in that uh, those dimensions was to help <clears throat> negate that effect. Um, so while that's not a factor for us, I do want to maintain an, as authentic a look as possible. And so being, I'm going to go ahead and do it in a roughly 18 to 24 inch lift. That also helps make sure that we keep our um, baselines for the stone parallel to the ground. So there we have it. Um, let's get it. let's get to it. All right. Before we get started laying the stone, uh, my wife's going to talk about the different types of stone and uh, something that I've found to be helpful. When you collect your stone, it's best to sort it. We've sorted it into four different categories. We have small. And here we have chunk, and our flat, and our rainbow. Alright, so now that she's kind of explained how I've classified the stone, and that's these are not masonry classifications to my knowledge, it's just my own made up names uh, that made sense to me. but. What I've got here is a flat, and um, <clears throat> by my classification, a flat would obviously be flatter than it is any other shape, um, which also lends typically to it being um, rectangular in nature. Um, this is going to be a cornerstone, so I've got just a cheesy little regular block hammer here that my dad has had forever. Um, <clears throat> and. Um, I'm just going to knock off this corner right here. You can see that's sticking up. I want this edge to actually go against the bandboard or the form. Um, and so I'm just going to knock this, this piece off. All right. And it's limestone, so it breaks pretty well. Uh, this actually splintered a little bit, but that's not really a problem for where I'm using it. And then this piece, I'll be able to use somewhere else with a little bit of work on it. So let's go ahead and stick it in. All right, now, as you can see, um, just pump of sand out here. Um, I've got some stone laid up on the forms um, because I don't want to have to keep walking back and forth to grab them. So um, let's go ahead and stick this guy in. Now, I don't really want this fresh cut face to be seen, even though it wouldn't really matter. Uh, it's here on the back corner of the building. So I'm going to put this one uh, this side down and something I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this little point off right here as well. That'll make it made up with another rock more nicely. So we just set that in the corner and um, you snuggle it in really good into the sand. And something we're going to be doing is coming back and filling in the, the joints um, with sand from the top. So, there we go. Those two fit really nicely together. Now 
as do those. Now, it is easier to work this in place if the sand is wet, but I'm not going to bother with that tonight. Um, it's going okay. So you don't want to run too many in a row that are exactly the same size. Um, so here I've got one that I would call a chunk. <coughs> And you just kind of tumble it till you find the part you would want visible. I think that one's going to work here. Uh, all right, time to go back to the pile. There's nothing magical about picking the, the next piece to go in. It fits and goes. And there's an old old rule in masonry, if you lift it, you put it in the wall. The only sorting I've done for color was I pulled out colors I didn't want to use. Okay, I found one that's going to bridge these pretty well, but they both need a little dressing. So I'm going to take this one back up and knock this point off. Now. I am going to get some stone chisels. Uh, there's a couple company, companies that make some that I love, um, but all in time. You want to try to create bonds too, like how this placement is going, I'm bridging the seams. I'm not going to end up with, you know, seam, seam. Um, And then you have to try to remember what the face of the, the rocks look like. If you have any rocks that are um, sloped back, um, you want to try to remember that. But it's pretty much just like putting a puzzle together. If you have a stressful day job, sometimes my job can be stressful. Uh, this sort of becomes therapeutic. Really, I should actually be doing this out of the bed here. Um, so, probably something I will start doing. I'm not liking how that rock's going in, and I'm going to explain why. If you can see how it's sloped up and sloped up, that's gonna create an issue. I should really be putting this rock in like this. So now that I've wasted a little time fiddling with it there, I'm just gonna move down the line. 